This video was sponsored by Skillshare. I've a link for you to try them out for free, so hang out until the end. Hey, happy Friday. This week we'll talk about how Qualcomm can beat the competition despite having slower chips. We'll talk about how Microsoft is experimenting with bringing Android apps to Windows. And we'll also talk about Nokia making laptops. Sort of. Like every week, we also have a brand new tech knowledge quiz, but this week it's available both inside the Crowd app on Android and on the web as well. Both are linked in the description, so happy quizzing and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, the most important story this week has to be the really mind-boggling Snapdragon 888, the newest flagship chip Qualcomm recently launched. I watched the entire one and a half hour event and my mind is well and truly boggled. From the 87 minutes of this presentation, Qualcomm spent exactly one minute and three seconds talking about its CPU. Which is to say, they basically didn't talk about it at all. The entire rest of the show was 20 plus minute deep dives on their image signal processors, all their AI tech, their connectivity stack, especially around 5G, and their gaming suite. Although there too, they barely mentioned the actual GPU and its performance at all, besides saying how much faster it is. The GPU and especially the CPU are the core components of a mobile SoC, so sweeping them under the rug is a weird choice to say the least. It's kind of like McDonald's launching a new menu and in the ads only describing the fries and the coke, not really the burger. It's a strange choice and it took me a while to understand what is going on, but I actually think it's a brilliant move. See, the CPU is pretty much exactly the kind of predictable year-over-year -year upgrade we were expecting. It's built on a more efficient 5 nanometer process versus last year's 7 nanometer process, and it has a new high-performance core called the Cortex-X1 that will allow for better single-core performance than before. Cool stuff, but not exactly groundbreaking as they are pretty much using the standard design straight from ARM, so competitors like Samsung are expected to have the exact same layout on their processors. And based on rumors, Samsung specifically might even have achieved higher clock rates on the same CPU cores than Qualcomm this year. So after a very long reign, Snapdragon processors might be losing their kind of crown as the pure performance champion of the Android ecosystem. And Qualcomm specifically pointed out during their keynote not to worry about benchmarks this year because maybe their competitors will beat them at that. Who knows? Instead, what they told us to focus on are things like cameras, AI, 5G, and gaming. And to be fair, in these areas, the company has made huge and really impressive gains. Their new triple ISP, for example, will allow for much better computational photography and things like capturing 4K videos or high resolution photos from three cameras simultaneously. They have a staggering range of AI coprocessors, as well as a really advanced software layer on top, a dedicated sensing hub that allows devices to monitor noise levels and motion and other things with barely any power consumption, their 5G standard is finally fully integrated into the chip itself and appears to be much more advanced than those of the competition, and their gaming stack even allows for things like variable raid shading, a fancy trick that allows game developers to render less important parts of a frame in lower resolution to improve performance. So their other stuff, their fries and coke, is actually really impressive this year, and it appears to outclass the competition significantly, and Qualcomm is betting big that starting this year, they will be able to make consumers as well as device makers care about these things more than about the raw CPU and GPU performance or the burger. It's a risky bet, but I don't think they are entirely wrong. Taking better photos and having more reliable connectivity is probably a higher priority for most users than having a slightly faster CPU. And given that more and more of the really demanding processes, like applying filters on top of a video real-time or real-time transcription is increasingly offloaded from the main CPU and GPU onto these other dedicated coprocessors and software layers, we could soon end up in a place where these Snapdragon chips will outperform the competition in real-world applications even if they score lower in benchmarks. Nvidia did a similar thing with their graphics cards by not just chasing raw performance but instead focusing heavily on things like RTX Voice, their ridiculously good noise cancelling software, or CUDA for example, a special software layer that accelerates specific workloads like machine learning on Nvidia cards. And they have gotten to a point where for many workloads, Nvidia cards are essentially the only choice regardless of benchmarks. And I think Qualcomm 
Qualcomm is smartly aiming for a similar outcome. Okay, my one of the week will be Project Latte, which is the name of a rumored project by Microsoft that would allow Android apps to come to Windows 10, including the ability to publish them in the Microsoft Store. This is a rumor from Windows Central's Zach Bowden, and while he has a phenomenal track record, it is of course not impossible that Microsoft will abandon the project before it becomes a reality. But here is what we know so far. App makers will specifically have to package their apps and publish them to the platform, and Microsoft is expected to run its own Android subsystem on Windows to actually be able to run the apps, similarly to how they are currently allowing users to run a Linux subsystem on Windows already. Much like with Huawei's Android, Google Play services are of course unlikely to work on Windows, so many apps that rely on them for things like location, security, and notification will likely have to make some workarounds if they want to come to Windows, but but other than that, the porting of apps is supposedly pretty much drag and drop. And this is obviously only a win depending on how good the execution ends up being. But to be fair, Microsoft's execution around bringing Linux to Windows was pretty spectacular, and apparently they've been working at this previously with something called Project Astoria, by which I mean bringing Android apps to Windows 10, and apparently that project went really well, and the main reason they cancelled it was that it went a little too well, and Microsoft got a little afraid that people might stop making high-quality Windows apps if Android apps just worked on Windows. So we'll just have to wait and see. As you might know, I actually have an Android app of my own called Crowd, and sure, if it's easy to port, I'd love to have that working on Windows, why not? But I'd love to hear what Android apps you would use if Project Latte actually became a thing. Let me know down in the comments. And my fail of the week is that the first Nokia-branded laptops since 2009 are scheduled to launch in just a couple of days now. The only problem being that these new upcoming laptops apparently have nothing to do with Nokia other than carrying the Nokia brand. If you didn't know, this is what the last Nokia laptops from 2009 looked like, and a few days ago an Indian leaker called Mukul Sharma, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, found that nine new Nokia branded laptops were certified by Indian authorities. The model names suggest Windows laptops running Intel i3 and i5 processors, and the only problem is that these are actually made by an ODM called Tongfang Hong Kong Suzhou Limited. I talked about ODMs in length in my last week's episode, you can watch that somewhere here, but looking at this specific ODM, it seems quite likely that they made both the design and the manufacturing and maybe even the distribution of this device, so Nokia likely has pretty much nothing to do with it at all. This follows their recently launched TVs, which Nokia has also outsourced to brand licensees like StreamView from Austria, their audio products, which they have outsourced to a Chinese company called Richgo, and of course their phones, which they have outsourced to HMD. And I think you can start to see a pattern here. I always thought that HMD in particular was a more reasonable approach as they are founded by ex-Nokia employees and Nokia has actually invested into the company, but just finding completely random ODMs for the other products just seems lazy. While the individual products have so far ended up being fine, I mean, I've looked at all the reviews online and most of these products have pretty good reception, I do think it is basically impossible to build a high quality, reliable, consistent brand with this strategy over time. Anyway, talking of online reviews, let me circle back to Crowd for a second. Did you know that I designed the whole app myself despite having zero experience with designing apps before? UI and UX design is one of those pretty cool skills that you can actually pick up yourself with nothing but a computer, a free program like Adobe XD or Figma, and one of the hundreds of high quality classes over at Skillshare. If you want to give Adobe XD a try, I recommend this class for absolute beginners if you want to build mobile apps. It goes through all the basics, but also all the way up to more complex topics like managing reusable components and properly sharing your designs so developers know what to do with them, or you could alternatively try this one on Figma. Figma is a similar super powerful tool you can use for free that actually works right inside your browser, kind of like Google Docs, but for designing apps. Skillshare classes are structured into neat playlists, they let you upload class projects so other students and instructors can give you feedback on it and the platform has thousands of classes on anything from design photography video editing music creation marketing or whatever skill you want to pick up next the first 1000 people to use my link in the description will get a free trial of skillshare premium and if you choose to keep it it's less than 10 dollars a month for an annual subscription so check it out happy learning and i'll see you next friday